So of course, there's two ways to fast. There's, oh, there's three ways. The people who just give up food and water, that's very hard to do, right? And then there's the special, there's special people who not only give up food and water, but guess what else they give up? Doing bad things, saying bad things, listening to bad things, uh, all of those things. And we're going to talk about what Imam Al-Ghazali talks about. If you can fast from those things, you have a very, very, very special fast. And then there's another level of people like the prophets and they fast from everything except thinking of Allah. And that would be very hard to do. But we can join the middle group of the very special people. If you not only give up food and water, but you give up doing things and saying things and listening to things that really, in a way, aren't so great. So amazing thing is Imam al-Ghazali. He says that fasting can be compared, right, to, um, I'll show you, to like going into a fortress and it protects you. See, the children made a fortress and they got inside of it. You could make a fortress in the living room just from a table with some sheets put around it. it it's, it's a protection because once you're inside, you know the word fasting in Arabic is som. Have you ever heard that? Siam, som. You know what that means? The, some of the letters mean it means silence, right? It means quiet and peaceful. You know, if you're completely peaceful children, you can feel your golden heart. You know, the presence of Allah is called Sakina. If you're present and it's quiet and you're silent, you can feel that. But can you feel that if you're running around, watching TV, banging into things and fighting? You can't feel that, can you? No. So this gives you an, this incredible chance to go into this fortress, which is, protects you. It's like a shield. And it keeps you from some of the bad things that would totally distract you. And you get to remind yourself, oh, I'm just a pure goodness, golden heart. For a whole month, you get this great chance to go into this fortress. So now, um, now things you have, now another thing it teaches you, by the way, this is another thing you learn. All right. If you can't get to food very easily, right? Here are these children. Do you think they're jumping up and eating the cake? What are they doing? No. Impatient. They're patient. Oh, who knows? Oh, you're smart. You know about patience. Patience is the most important thing. Um, are there, maybe sometime we're not patient with our brothers or sisters. Maybe we're impatient. We want things to come faster than they do. But this is a great chance to practice patience. And you know, we can't really be patient with things that are happening. We don't trust the law because the law gives us, whether we know it or not, it gives us difficulties and blessings. And all of those are there to polish our heart. So maybe you're going to find fasting this month a little difficult, right? Be patient with yourself. Just be very still and let your heart be polished. And by the way, did you know? that there's a special gate to paradise called Al-Rayyan that takes you in and only people who are fasting get to go through that gate. So keep that in mind, all right? All right, then another like thing. Like after you, after you pass away? Yes. Oh, that's yeah. a good point. That is an yeah. excellent point. Oh my goodness. I'm wondering whether or not that gate that's open to the faster, maybe when you're fasting and you're sitting and you're not sitting and you're remembering a law, maybe some of the light from that gate is pouring into you. You know what? We have to ask somebody who really knows about things. That is a brilliant question. Absolutely brilliant. You know, God is with those people who are patient. Do you like it if somebody's impatient with you? Sometimes somebody is like saying to me, speed it up, do it. And that people are not patient. It's really mean if people aren't patient with other people, right? You, you, want, to be, you want to be kind at all times, right? So now um, there's another thing too. There is a hadith in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
says to his angels, speaks to his angels. He says, there are young people who have devoted their self to, to Allah's worship and service. And then, so Allah says, oh, young person, you who have given up your desires and sacrificed this time of your health and strength for my sake, you are one of my angels, right? Children, you all are young people. For some really old people, they're not going out, they're not busy anyway, they're sitting around. Maybe it's easy for them to fast, but I think it might be hard for young people to fast because you're busy and you're running to school and you've got all those things you have to do. So Allah is saying, if for a young person to fast, it makes them like one of his angels. So you all, if you all do this right, you could experience being loved like an angel. Wouldn't that be wonderful? You know, that would be marvelous, really. And you know, um, you know how there are different special Allah says fasting, all the five pillars. You know, the five pillars, we've got prayer and we've got um we've got uh, zakat and hajj and all of these, but fasting is very special to Allah. And you say, why is that more special? than the others. Well, we can say that the Kaaba, Ghazali points out, is a very, the whole world is a sacred place, but the Kaaba is special. And let's say all the days of the week are, spe are good, but Friday is special. Well, zakat is like, I mean, uh, fasting is like that. It's special because it's a secret thing you do with Allah. You know, children, only Allah knows if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're fasting. Because what, couldn't you sneak a cookie or take a sip of water and nobody would know? Isn't it true? It's invisible. Yet people can see you praying, see you giving zakat, see you making the hajj. But this is invisible. So this is a secret relationship you get to have with Allah. Isn't that wonderful? Don't you think so? And a very special reward for it, right? So not only you get a special reward from Allah it, because it's, you have a secret relationship with him. But you know what? There's another good part about fasting. I don't know whether you've noticed it because you all are active and young, but you know, as the end of the day comes and you're, you're thirsty and you're hungry and you feel a little bit weak, you know, if you feel a little bit weak and you're sitting there, maybe you're doing your afternoon prayers, maybe you're doing the Asr prayer and you're not really full of food and energy. And you can feel when you're weak, your body, your sort of heavy body is kind of quieted down. And suddenly you can feel your golden heart even more. You can feel your spiritual nature, not just you, your mother and father, everyone can feel it. But if you eat a lot of food, like we are every day, having coffee, running around, having cookies, uh, you're very much in the body. But if you weaken the body, it gives you this opportunity to experience your beautiful spiritual heart, you know, because some of the major activity uh, quiets down. And it's very good because, um, because also you're learning self-control, which you're always going to need, right? And then Ghazali makes an amazing image. If you're, if you're full of energy and you're eating a like, lot of food, he said, it's like you've got a whole field, a whole pasture, right? Full of green grass, all the fun things you're doing. And then these naughty sheep come in and they start nibbling the grass everywhere. These sheep are like those parts of yourself that are like your nafs, your lower, your lower self nafs. And they just looking for yummy things to do. But if you calm down and everything's peaceful, those little naughty sheep won't come and be nibbling at all the things you're doing because your fasting is like a shield. What's a shield? Does everyone know what a shield is? You can put it's it up. Like like something that protects you. It protects you. Exactly, right? So it's a shield protects you, right? Now, um, this is beautiful. Um, according to the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, all of the children of Adam would be able to gaze on the dominions of the heavens, look out into the paradise if our hearts weren't surrounded by low whisperings. Fasting helps to lower those whisperings if you're, if you're a little bit weakened. 
you might be able to see spiritual demands. Otherwise, you're just running around normal life, looking at TV, doing whatever you do. But you have this real opportunity for a whole month, and I want you all to do this. You're going to notice there's a way that you're going to calm down and get quiet. It's not going to happen all the time, but look for one of those moments, maybe around the time you're, you're uh, doing Asr, right? Because, you know, you're going to be doing the real special fast. You're going to be doing the outer fast, the water and the food. And you're going to be doing the inner fast as well. All right. And I know you're going to have a, a great success at it. Right. Now, um, um, I think you all know most everything about fasting, um, what it involves. I'm just before we go to some of the inner things we're going to do, I just want to remind you, right, that. Our whole thing is we're trying to keep our golden hearts, our true selves, our fitra, completely luminous, all right? Now, um, first thing is you have to sight the moon. Do you all go out and look for the moon or do you just read about, you, some people go out, I mean. I go out. Yeah. You see, we go out and look for the moon. They look we at go out moon. in our backyard and. Isn't that fun? We go to a park and uh, get our telescope. And you do, you really do? Oh, that's wonderful. We go to a park and we collect our friends and we just look for the moon. Oh, you all really have fun because you know what's so exciting when you're looking at the moon? And you, can see, you can see it moving. Every few minutes you realize it's changed position, you know, when you're out looking at the moon. We're on an earth floating in, in the universe of God. Isn't that exciting? And then when the earth turns, we start to see the moon. So the first thing is, is sighting the moon and you all do it. Now, the next thing is, did you all know? I forgot this, but this is important. Every night before you go to bed, you make an intention from your heart to fast the next day. You can't just say, I intend to make, uh, to fast the whole month of Ramadan. It's very important that every night before you go to bed, before you go to sleep, make the intention to wake up and fast. Would we, will you all promise to do that? It's very, it's the second important thing. Um, and then the third is, you know, you can't take anything in, not even medicine, right? But it, let's say, let's say you breathe in an insect. Oh, you got an insect. That doesn't break your fast. Or maybe you're making wudu and water gets down your throat. Well, if you didn't mean to, it doesn't make any difference, you know? that your fat not, nothing happens to your fast so if your fast gets broken right um um well there are different things you can do to make up for broken fast i don't think we have to get into that right now but um when you read how many how many difficult things adults have to do if they break their fast it makes you realize that it's really serious you don't want to be breaking it you want to do your very best you know, so that you don't have to make it up again, right? And then there are six aspects that are the sunnah of the prophet. What I just told you were things that are obligatory, but this is sunnah, this is extra, all right? Um, to delay your pre-dawn meal, eat as close to fajr as you can, but not after fajr. To at sunset, hurry to break your fast, don't delay, and then what do you break it with? What is the sunnah? Do you all know what you can break it with? Moroccan milk. You can have, yes, you can have, you can, and you can have a bat and you can have, what else can you have? Dates? Someone says? Yeah. Dates, dates, dates. You can have Krispy dates cream. and water. These are all things that the-, the Yes. With cream cheese with an al almond. Oh, that sounds delicious. I wish I were at your house. That sounds really fun. And then um, another thing is um, during the day, you should avoid brushing your teeth because when you brush your teeth, it makes you feel fresh. And actually Allah is happy if your breath is a little not great because it shows you're a sincere faster. So don't go brushing your feet. Uh, teeth or gargling water to refresh yourself. Just go ahead and feel not refreshed. And then also, you know, it's also very good to be generous in Ramadan. Can you all think of ways you can be generous? I'm sure you can. There must be lots of ways you can be generous. And then another thing, 
Um, of course, if you can get a chance to be reading Quran, that would be really wonderful. And I'm going to suggest something. In the last 10, ten days of Ramadan, it was the sunnah of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, to make something called ittikaf. Do you know what that is? That is to go in and stay in the mosque for 10 days, only going out for important needs, like to go to the bathroom or maybe there's a funeral or something. Now, did you know here in Louisville that the, we have a mosque and they let children come, I'll show you, for three or four days, right? And they get to come in the mosque with their sleeping bags and they do, and they're quiet and they get to practice it to calf from now. So maybe you all can find a place where you all could do it one afternoon or spend one day. And this would be a wonderful thing. And if not, maybe you could make it at home. You could set up a card table and put a cloth over it and pretend this was a secluded place. Yes, Inaya, yes. Last time, so we actually did something like what you're explaining to me now. But it was not at a masjid, it was actually at our home because we didn't we couldn't do it at the masjid. So we got like pipes and we made like like a house kind of inside our masjid room. We put like vi like like a cloth over it and and we put like vines and stuff to make it really pretty. And we just sat in there and we read Quran and we learned about Allah and we just enjoyed in there. That is the most wonderful thing to hear. Anyone else do anything like that? That's just marvelous. Yes, Sahra. Well, yeah. actually I've never done it before, but there's this program, this, there's this other program I do. It's called Newer Kids. And they have like, like little like lessons and then they have like challenges. Like, like it's like basically like, the challenges are basically like homework. So one of them, so like one of them during Ramadan is like build your own home masjid. So you need, you could build it out of cardboard or, or Legos or whatever you want. That's great. That's and great. then you can go inside it. That's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, and I want to tell you a Ramadan joke. Okay. A Ramadan joke. Okay. It's going to be an Urdu one, but I can explain it. What kind of flower go, grows in Ramadan? I don't know what kind. A rose. Uh, rosa means fast in Urdu. So, and then the rose is the flower. Isn't and then, that beautiful? So, ittikaf, and do you know, in the last 10 days of Ramadan, what, what special night could occur? Does anyone know? Yes. Omar, Omar didn't talk yet. Omar, what, what are you going to say? Isra and Miraj. <laughs> This is the, the night of power, the Laylatul Qadr, when the Quran came down, right? And it's supposed to be on an odd number. So it could be on the 21st, 23rd, 25th, or 27th of the sacred month. And so that, night, what? yeah, it's called yeah. The, the night of power. And this was the night in which the Quran came down. But we don't know exactly which night it is, but they say if you're praying or doing worship that night, it's worth a thousand months of prayer. Isn't that special? Maybe this year on those evenings, you all can do very special prayers on those four days. Do you think you could do that? Now, the now, now we're going to get into the next thing. We've talked about, we've talked about the outer Ramadan, how you do it, what is Sunnah and what is Farid, what has to be, what's obligatory. Now we're going to go into the special inner ways, all right? All right, so I've told you that 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 we also will just like with the wudu, there's we're going to learn how to fast um and be with the very special people, you know, with our hearing, seeing, speaking, and our and our hands and our feet. All right. So let's see. So there's six, we're gonna have six inner practices. Remember, children, life is a spiritual journey, and you're young, so this is a very good time to get going on the journey and practice all of these things, because they will be the best thing you have in life, because they're invisible, and they really help you. All right, here we are. We're in Ramadan. The first thing, let's talk about the eyes. 
what do you all normally do with your eyes? Well, maybe we watch TV, maybe devices, maybe watching a soccer game, maybe. I'd like to know how you could fast with your eyes. What are some better things you can do with your eyes during Ramadan? You can replace some of just playing around. Okay, I would like to have something from each person. Inaya, how would, yes, how would you fast with your eyes? Uh, you can like read the Quran. You can like watch and learn from your parents and how they do it. You can wow. sit, you can learn from sheikhs nearby. Wow. You could go to Juma every Friday. Those are beautiful. And I even think you could go outside and look at the sky and look at the trees and remember the beautiful names of Allah and how they they make different forms in nature. Like one of the names of Allah is Al Hafiz, the protector. Maybe you go out and there's a branch shading your shading you. So that's Allah's protecting you with a branch. Do you see all the ways you can see Allah in nature? All right, some other ideas. What else can you all do with your eyes? Yes, Omar. Um, we can, uh, we can, uh, look at bugs or look at butterflies on. That's great. That's a beautiful idea. Beautiful. And Nisa, do you have something to say? Uh, we could read the Quran or we could look at something very peaceful or something that Allah gave us. That's beautiful. That's beautiful, very beautiful. Reflect on something or learn how to do something for our parents. How beautiful, how beautiful. That's wonderful. And let's see, uh, Zahra, you had something to say? Okay, so I might need to tell you some more background information on this. All right. So um, the, the international Pakistani sport is cricket. And so like, there's like, these like the cricket games play on the tv and we watch them so um so then uh maybe taking a maybe like not turning on the tv while those games are happening there you go there you go so of course and also oh and yeah. also um and also maybe reading more books and not watching like tv shows and stuff absolutely reading. yeah let's make this month a, a special one remember we're trying to be more silent and we're trying to experience our golden hearts inside of us, that spiritual presence when you're not just eating wildly, right? That's very important. So those are things we're going to do with our eyes. All right. Now, of course, the worst thing is the mouth because we can say bad things. We could say something mean to someone. We could argue. I don't know whether you remember this, but in the book of knowledge of Ghazali, he said, you know, arguing. Do you like to hear people arguing? It's horrible, isn't it? When you hear people arguing, awful. And yet we argue with people. No, it's mine or whatever. It, Al-Ghazali explains, if you're about to argue and you catch yourself and you stop arguing, Allah will give you a very special, special home in paradise. But if you're right, say you're arguing because you're the one who's right and you give it up, you get a very high special palace in paradise. So arguing is something we don't want to do. And something we, the worst thing you can possibly do is to talk badly about someone behind their back, right? To talk about people. It's called gossiping, right? Backbiting. Do you know how bad that is? That in the Quran, Allah says that it's the same as eating somebody's dead flesh. Would you want to eat somebody's dead flesh? No. And do you know there's a, prophet, a hadith of the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. Listen to this. During his life, it was Ramadan, and two old ladies came up to him. And they said, we're very old. We'd like your permission to break our fast. And they were handed a bowl, and they were told, take this bowl and throw up in the bowl. And all the people watching were horrified because pieces of Flesh and blood came out, and the prophet said, by talking about other people, you already broke your fast. So this month, it's a terrible thing to ever do anyway. You know, um, people go around talking badly about people. I bet at your school, people have been hurt because people talked about them, never mind saying mean things. 
So this month, we're going to be very careful and always, actually, not just this month, not to talk about people or say mean things. So each one of you give an example of- I don't really um, understand what you mean by like, they like they threw up in the bowl. Like, what does that mean? Because the Quran explains that when we go and talk about somebody behind their back, it's the same as if we were eating their dead flesh. Isn't that horrible? And do you think Allah would use such a horrible image except that he wants to show us that's how horrible it is to talk badly about people? So that's what the image is about. It's a good question, Inaya. So I would like each of you to say one thing that you're really going to be careful about with your mouth during this month. Okay, each one of you tell me something you're going to be. Um, Akbar, would you like to say what you'll be really careful with? Uh, the thing I might do uh, this Ramadan is uh, say uh, someone was fighting me or uh, uh, they were being mean to me and I got really mad and then I spoke something, said something really mean behind their back. I might not try to do that. Oh dear. That's a good thing. Just don't. Don't do it at all. Yeah. Doesn't work. We'll let Omar. Omar, what are you going to do carefully with your mouth? What are you going to really watch out for? I would uh I would tell one of my friends to stop doing bad things to one of my other friends. Mm -hmm. Very good. Give good counsel. Protect someone who's being hurt. That's a wonderful thing to do. Yes, good. Uh, who else would like to speak? Akbar, are you ready now or not yet? I guess not yet. Uh, Inayat? Um, so I will try not to be mean to my brother or sister. Good. And I will try not to be, like, like I'm not saying that I do, but like, if I would definitely try to improve the way I speak to my parents. Oh, very important. Very, bless your heart. Bless your heart. Yeah, because your mouth is, look how much damage can be done with the mouth. You know, you could just say something in a mean way. or you And could I have a question. If you're like sharp-tongued, like me, I'm sharp-tongued, does uh -huh. that like... Is it bad if I like accidentally say something that I didn't mean to say? Like, because I do that a lot. You know what? All you have to do is say, oh, I'm sorry. Just like that. Just immediately say, if you spoke sharply, say, I spoke sharply. Forgive me. Just end it right there. Right? And that, that's wonderful to be able to watch yourself. You know, we, we're told that each one of us we have a lower nafs, the self that, that does thoughtless things and is not kind. And then we have the nafs alawama, the part, the heart that's watching. And you're watching yourself. Look at you. You notice that you did that, right? So all you have to do is the nafs alawama mm, says, oh, I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. And that makes you go right into your golden heart, you know? Yeah. Who else has something they're going to tell that they're going to be careful with? Anissa, did you speak? You did, didn't you? I didn't. Well, what can you do to watch what you say? I'm going to make sure I don't argue. Excellent. Don't argue, right? Yeah. And we don't like people who argue. What about being angry? That's horrible when you hear angry people, isn't it? Well, um, honestly, I don't really get angry. I get more like sad. Oh. <laughs> all right this now we've talked about saying okay we also by the way right wait i had i had something to say too please say it okay so um i was i gonna say i'll try not to tattle on my brother all, all the time i mean he's kind of i mean he like sometimes hits me and stuff but so maybe just for like every little hit, I won't tattle on him. Yeah. Maybe. And, and also we wouldn't lie, would we? You know, 
and we wouldn't say anything mean, all right? Okay, now that's one set, but now we have the ears. Remember you wash the ears in wudu? If, if you have a, if yeah. somebody comes up to you and they telling you, oh, that little girl, she wore that horrible dress to school. If you listen to it, you're participating in it. So you can't listen to bad things, right? You don't want, be very sure you don't listen to bad things, right? If someone starts speaking, you know, you can just do this. I'm fasting. Because, you know, your ears and your eyes and all of this, these are dignified parts of your beautiful body. You don't want them to get horrible things on them, would you? I mean, you're, you're given, you're entrusted with eyes and a mouth and ears and hands and feet by Allah. So like, um, oh, some other things you could avoid. What about bragging? What would that, would that be bad to do? Everybody brags a little bit. Remember, we talked a lot about that last week with Zakat. You don't want to be showing off. Remember the man who, in fact, didn't wear his good clothes when he went out because he didn't want people to, to envy? Because all of these have to do with our, our, uh, our inner dignity, you know? I have um, a question. Yes. Um, I know the, the man who is trying to be like, um, who didn't wear like, you know, good clothes when he went out. I have a few like comments on that. So, and questions. Why would he ever have good clothes if he only wore bad clothes out? Um, second of all, um, how comes, uh, so. No. Oh, I forgot. I'll think about well, it. Maybe, maybe he'd have the nice clothes to be with his family and friends and all that. But I mean, there've been moments even in my own life where I've gone to, let's say, a party of ladies, and I could have worn some really expensive thing, you know, showing off a little. And maybe they think, oh, I wish I had that kind of thing too. It would be so easy just to wear some of my normal nice clothes. You see, it's just, you don't want people to be envious, you know, wishing what they didn't have. I think that's what it is. And I don't think that would be every day. There'd be a moment even in your own life, you'll discover there's a moment when you're going to think I could wear this or that. And then you'll even think, am I, would I be showing off with this? You know, it's just, it's just, it's just manners. It's just respecting other people, putting their feelings first, right? Putting other people's feelings first. What would Well, some I don't think anybody envies that much anymore. Like, well, no. I don't like so I don't think anybody envies that much anymore so I don't think it would be th that bad to like wear your nice clothes because then I think it's kind of like respecting them like you want to wear nice clothes in front of them not bad oh, of clothes. course no no obviously we want to wear decent beautiful respectful clothes you're right about that but it's a subtle thing you you can just um you can see Anissa has raised her hand. Anissa, what would you like to say? Yes. Um, but if everybody is wearing something like really similar, then if you wear something like even more subtle, it looks kind of weird. No, no, no. We're not. It's all right. We don't have to be weird. I'm just saying you watch out in your life someday, you know, where you, you might just notice this in yourself. This was just a story to point out that we put other people's feelings first. If you know this might make someone feel uncomfortable, it could be lots of different things like that. But I mean, um, but I think, you know, the, the speaking badly, there was a, a, a mother who called me and she said, um, oh no, she said, my little girl, Lena, I was at a party and with ladies and we were talking and Lena whispered in my ear and she said, Mommy, are, are you are you backbiting? You ladies are talking about other people. And I said, may I speak to Lena? And Lena got on the phone and she said, oh, auntie. She said, before we read the Ghazali about backbiting, I'd never heard of it. And I thought, oh my goodness. And it's so <laughs> important. When I was a little girl, my mother used to say to me once a week, now, dear, 
if you don't have something nice to say about someone, don't say anything at all. Really, we should be saying that to each other <laughs> 10 times a day. It is so dangerous. We're now bringing out a new book of Imam al-Ghazali, a whole book just on all the things that can go wrong with speech, just the way you say it, the tone you say it in. I mean, you could say, your mother could say, dinner, right? And you could say, coming, or you could say, coming, right? Even the tone of your voice, right? The voice can, can, can do many sad things. What are some more things you all can think of that you could be careful with, with, your, with what you say? So now that we finished talking about the five senses, there's also the stomach, right? Because honestly, there is this issue when you break your fast in Ramadan, you shouldn't just fill it and pile it up with so many ice creams and so much filling yourself up. You want to leave yourself a little empty this way because it's, it's not a good idea to just suddenly stuff yourself. And today I was having a wonderful meeting with some mothers in England and they said, you know, the pity is we're supposed to be having less and spending more time on Quran. And this lady said, all I do is cook all day long and then people eat too much. Really, she said, we should just eat something very simple and humble. Of course, we want to celebrate and there's going to be an Eid, but we shouldn't overeat. And that's a, a problem also, because then when you overeat, you lose some of that that beautiful sense we talked about earlier, that spiritual empty sense, you know, that you're a little bit weak. And then, um, um, yes. So like, should we eat something simple like mac and cheese or grilled cheese sandwiches or something like that? Well, you know, I think something healthy, you know. I mean, your mother will know how yeah, to Yeah, I mean like mac and cheese and broccoli or something. That actually sounds delicious. I'd love to have that. <laughs> Does that sound nice to you? Ghazali says, yeah, the Ghazali says, the spirit of fasting, this is the spirit we're after. The spirit of fasting is to weaken the body's energy by reducing the food that's coming in. And it helps us, our spiritual, it helps increase our spiritual lives. You know, people should have what they normally have for dinner. They shouldn't just like add in all the meals that they missed that day. And also you shouldn't sleep during the day, you know, because you want to experience fasting. You know, if we feel a little weak, you know, it, it's good. It makes us more spiritual. Do ever any of you go to the mosque for Tarawiyah prayers? Have you ever done that? Well, maybe you will when you're older. But also you don't want to, um, Ghazali makes an image. You don't want to just have like a horse with a bag of food hanging here. You don't want to just be eating. You want to leave something from yourself. You want to turn this into a chance to really um, polish your heart. So feeling a bit hungry and weak is a great help in your spiritual life, not to always be full and energetic, to be weakened down a little bit, because this is, um, and when, when we also, he said, this is the last sp spiritual thing. When you're breaking your fast, when you go to break your fast, don't think, I'm so great. I fasted all day. You should, you should, you know, be a little ashamed, you know, that, that maybe you could have fasted a little bit better. Remember when we talked about zakat last week, that when you give, you, you always feel, I could have given more. And I'm a little ashamed I didn't give more because we all have so much. We also need to feel a little bit humble when we're fasting. You know, not, I'm a great faster. I've done it like that, you know. And so the goal of fasting is for every human being to realize some special thing. There's a great picture here. Um, see these children here? Ghazali says, your sight and your hearing are special trust from Allah. Remember last week when we talked about how your qualities, who your parents are, your strengths, what you've got in this life, they're all on trust. They're on loan to you. Your hearing is on loan, your speech is on loan, and your sight is on loan. 
These are trusts given to you by Allah. You don't want to mess up those trusts. Don't you want to do something beautiful with your voice, with what you listen to and what you do with your hands? So that's an important thing that is being said, that even all of these senses you've got are special trust for you. And then um, this is in the, in the story. When a person fasts, remember, they imitate the angels as much as possible. You know why? Angels don't want or need anything. Angels are, they, 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 they don't need anything. So we try to imitate the angels who don't have any worldly desires and they, and, and they, they just want to be near to God. So we should try when we're fasting to be like angels, just trying to be near and draw closer to God. And then Ghazali ends by saying, mm -hmm, um, these six inner practices Ghazali describes are so important that he says, the fast of someone who doesn't observe them, meaning keeping your eyes and your tongue and your ears and all of this free, right? Is, is not a complete fast. Ghazali believes for your fast to be complete, it shouldn't just be just giving up food and water. The ideal complete way to fast is both inwardly and outwardly, right? And so finally, you, you know, your, your trust is this whole fast you've been given is like a special trust from Allah. So I guess that's all we have to do except to, except to say that what you are all being given, and it's wonderful you're studying Ghazali, you are all being put in charge of your own hearts. Nobody's policing you with what you do, whether you pray or give zakat. Nobody is policing you of how you fast. You are all children in charge of your own beautiful hearts. And that's an incredible trust and an honor and a privilege to be given by Allah, glory be to he. What's, what's so lovely is that I'm seeing you all and we're about in a few days to begin Ramadan. And I want you all to do the real Ramadan. I want you to do the outer and the inner and I want you to be constantly watching what you're listening to and what you're saying and where you're going. Do you promise me? Yes. Okay, and then guess what? Let's get together after Ramadan and everybody say how it went. Some of the highlights for you. Maybe you could even keep a journal. Well, I want to thank our blessed brother Munir for arranging this. And it was so much fun getting to be with all of you. And I'm, I'm sending you my love and salams and praying that you have a wonderful time with your family and you're really successful. And you do a little it to calf. Everybody does a little it to calf. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for teaching us all this stuff. Oh, that's so sweet that you said that. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for thanking. Have a nice day. Thank you so much, my dear. Many blessings.